Welcome back to Logic Basics. Today we're going to learn about eduction. If you recall last time, we learned the rules of obversion and conversion for the square of opposition. Uh, we are headed towards doing these problems and fitting the statements on the square of opposition or on the full contrapositive square and figuring out whether these statements are true, false, or doubtful. So today I want to show you uh, how to do eduction. Remember we, we went down to the bottom of this handout to talk about eduction. It says draw and label two squares of opposition, the original and its full contrapositive. Fit the given statement onto the nearest square by obversion or conversion. Evaluate and explain. And we're going to figure out if it's true, false, or doubtful. And so I also want to draw your attention to this flow chart that I've made. That will help us. So we have here the two squares with the S's and P's. Um, that doesn't give us the answers for the, uh, the uh, let me find that again, the statements that we're ultimately driving towards. Uh, I'll find it in a minute. Um, so what we need to do is, there it is. What we need to do is fill in the S's and P's with neurotic and inhibited ultimately to make the square of opposition and its uh, full contrapositive square to go with these statements. But before we do that, I need to show you how to make the full contrapositive square. Um, I'm going to take myself out of the picture for a moment so that I can draw this for you. So we have two squares of opposition. The, the original A statement says all S is P. Now this A statement is going to help us determine the A statement for the full contrapositive square. Now we can also figure out the rest of the original square from this A statement because we know how to do that. For example, we know that over here is the E statement and E says no S is P. We know that the contradiction is the O statement, which says sum S is not P. And we know the I statement says sum S is P. Okay, but how do we figure out this second square? So the second square is going to be determined by obverting, converting, and obverting a third time this A statement. So I'm going to do it for you. And I'm going to show you how to do it, and then I'm going to show you a shortcut so that you don't have to do this. Uh, when I was a student, I got myself stuck in a loop. I just kept obverting, converting, obverting over and over, and I never got anywhere. So I want you to avoid that error. So uh, what I'm going to do is keep put this in your notes. Okay, so you have your original square. You have it all labeled. I'm going to erase mine for a moment so that I could... Um, show you the steps. Actually, I'm not going to erase everything. I'm just going to erase this side so I have some space. I want to figure out how to get that A statement to fit on the second square. So here's what I'm going to do. Here's my A statement. All S is P. And the first thing I'm going to do is obvert this statement. All right, now if you recall, the rules of obversion, errors are obvious. Remember, this is an A statement. A obverts to E, right? And so when we obvert, we're going to keep the universality. We're going to change the quality. Keep the quantity, change the quality. So it's affirmative. Now it's going to be negative. And it's going to stay S. It's going to stay is. But now we negate the P term. So now we have no S is non-P. Okay, now that is obversion. I'll put that over here. But we need to do another thing, actually two more things. We need to now convert that E statement. And if you remember, the rule of conversion for an E statement is you just switch the S and P terms. So this is going to now say no non-P is S. So switch the S and P terms. Okay, we're almost there. We're almost to full contraposition. Now we're going to do one more obversion, obvert that E statement to an A statement, and it's going to stay universal. So now it's going to say all non P is non S. 
So notice the S goes to non. This uh, no goes to all. This stays the same. This stays the same. So now we have all non P is non S. That is the new A statement for the second square. Now you don't need to know how to do this. Uh, I guess you probably should know how to do this, but you don't need to do this for um, the purposes of our exercises. So notice this is called this is called full contrapositive. What full contrapositive is is obversion of the original A, then conversion, and then obversion again, and now you have this new statement that's going to be the A statement of the second square. So now I'm going to go back and I'm going to draw my second square with that A statement. Okay, so I'm going to stick it back in here and let's do the second square. So with that conclusion, now I have a new A statement and it is all non P is non S. So here's your clue, here's your cheat sheet. Here's the original, all S is P, here's the full contrapositive. What did we do? We switched the S and P terms and we negated them. So here's your clue, um, here's your shortcut. Shortcut, um, switch the original S and P terms and negate both, all right? So when you're setting up your squares, that's all you have to do. You don't have to go through that whole process, but that's the process we went through to get our second square. Now, um, what I want to do is fill out the rest of the square from here. Now you notice it's going to be a little messy because I can't really get that off without messing everything up, up. But now we can say, all right, what's the contradiction of that A? That A is going to be, a uh, contradiction of A is going to be O, and it's going to say sum non-P is not non-S, all right? The E, which is this corner, is going to say no, non-P is non-S. And then the I over here, sum non-P is non-S. So now, let me take this out of here. Now we have the original square and the full contrapositive square. And this is also what we saw on the cheat sheet or the uh, flow chart. So this flow chart is filled out with the same um, corners, All right? So this is what the, the original square and the full contrapositive square looks like. Um, there's one more thing I need you to know about, and this was mentioned in the last, uh, the last recording, but it's the reciprocal and the inverse. So the reciprocal goes here, re reciprocal, and it's the A statement that's backwards. It says all P is S, and this is doubtful every time. So remember I used the example, all baseball hats are black. Well, this one's saying all black things are baseball hats. Well, we don't know that. I have a black shirt on, that's not a baseball hat. So it's doubtful. There's also a, a full contrapositive version called the inverse. And the inverse says, it's the backwards version of this one, all non S is non P, okay, so it's just this A backwards and that one is also doubtful. Now, if you recall, I also told you the other doubtfuls are gonna be associated with these O statements. They're gonna be backwards O's because O does not convert. So we're gonna find a problem with those O's and it'll so, sort of look like well, it will look like this, sum uh, P is not 
S, that's going to be doubtful. Or some non S is not non P is also doubtful. Okay. Now, hopefully you have this in your notes. It looks like a mess on the screen, but you should have a clean copy in your notes. You can watch these videos a couple times if you need to go over it again. So make these two squares. These are your original and your full contrapositive squares of opposition. Um, I am going to pause here and we're going to, we're still working towards going over those, um, those examples. Let me find them. We're going to go towards these. Next time, every neurotic is inhibited. <laughs> All right.